Hello, everybody. My name is Yash Chitre. I'm a senior vice president here over at Hub Engage, and I will be your host for today's session. Uh, today, we're going to cover five ways to engage your employees in 2021 with uh, an employee experience platform. And as I work with customers and partners here at Hub Engage, uh, many are looking to understand, you know, what are the real simple yet effective tactics that can be leveraged inside their employee experience platform? Uh, and how do they get started quickly as we enter the new year? So we're going to focus on that today. Uh, and just to let you know, uh, you'll be getting a lot more than just five ideas today. Um, I've included a lot of bonus ideas that are just as powerful. So you'll have a good, good, good idea of, of uh, different things you can do to add to your mix. Uh, looks like, again, uh, based on the registration list I, I see, we've got a good mix of folks joining us, uh, some current customers, some stakeholders, um, as well as some new folks looking to deploy Hub Engage uh, next year. So that's really great. I hope this sort of helps you to think through all the different elements as you go about your planning for the new year. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, just a quick agenda of what we're gonna cover uh, in our time together today. So for those of you who are brand new to Hub Engage, we're gonna now briefly start by reviewing the, the benefits of an employee experience platform. Uh, this will help you to consider all the different things you can do inside the platform um, as you plan uh, to adopt one in the coming year. Uh, from there, we'll quickly jump into the good stuff, uh, tactics, ideas that you can adopt to get going fast. And as always, uh, you know, as an employee engagement guy, I always like to plan content and programming with the idea of capturing the hearts and minds of your employees, right? And uh, I've kind of tried to distill it down to the best top-down and bottom-up tactics that produce results the fastest. Um, and again, it's more than five ideas today. And then inside of this discussion, I'll show you some best practices on screen of how some uh, current customers that use Hub Engage are, are getting the job done today. And then we'll wrap up with a Q&A of some pre-submitted questions. And if you have any additional questions after the session, please feel free to reach out to me, shoot them over by email, um, and we'll be happy to keep the conversation going. Also, if you don't already have it, um, make sure you get a copy of our 2021 planning guide. Uh, this is really a great toolkit that has all the essentials and the checklists that you need to get going in 2021. Uh, and you can request your copy anytime uh, at our website, hubengage.com. So with that, let's go ahead and let's get at it. Now, foundationally speaking, you wanna start with the right platform that has all the tools you need in order to be successful and leveraging technology through a single platform that can be accessed via iOS, Android apps, web apps, uh, an intranet, emails, uh, and even TV screens uh, is essential. Now, Hub Engage is one of the only platforms available today that provides all four avenues of content exposure. The reason why is that you want to provide the same content and frictionless experience uh, to all of your employees, no matter where they are, right? You want to get 100% uh, coverage uh, no matter what channel they tune into. So everything needs to be integrated into one platform, and that makes it easy to, to access and to measure uh, different things as well. And uh, just to give you a pro tip there, uh, make the web app your employees' home screens, right? Um, that's a great starting point that gives access to not only content you push through the platform, um, but also the full spectrum of all the other apps and legacy systems that you have. You want to send them to the right place. Essentially, you're trying to get engagement across all your systems, the total landscape, by using the employee experience platform as that starting point for communications. You wanna be able to have 360 degrees of engagement in your communication strategy. This means not just pushing out top-down content that would be company to uh, employee items such as streaming news feeds with text, images, documents, events, policies, uh, directories, maybe some special procedures, uh, links to essential information uh, such as employee benefits, payroll schedules, maybe customer care, uh, your sales pipeline, et cetera but also bottom-up tactics that let your employees feed into that content ecosystem. So enabling tactics uh, such as social feeds, storytelling, celebrating heroes, recognition, rewards, best practices, this all leads to a better employee culture and a better brand. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I always say that, you know, it's, it's often um, heard, uh, you know, inside our offices that you have to, you have to sell in in order to sell out. And what does that mean? You really have to sell it to your employees so that they can sell it to your customers better. When your employees are engaged with the mission, vision, and values, that's going to translate to a better product, service, uh, a better customer experience. Uh, and that can flat out impact your bottom line financially. So you need to intrinsically motivate your employees so that they have skin in the game and also feel that they're being listened to, recognized so that they can contribute to the overall success of their careers and ultimately the company. I think that's the, that's the big goal at the end of the day. And if you pepper in some productivity tools, right? Like uh, instant messaging, so all your people can communicate to each other, uh, do peer-to-peer -peer chat, group chats inside your secure platform. And they're not doing it outside on you know, WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger and all that kind of stuff. The platform becomes the single source for everything work-related. And at the same time, fun and productive. So it's almost like you're, you're playing a trick on your employees. They, they really feel like uh, you know, they're getting something uh, entertaining and fun and informative, but at the same time, you're ticking off all your goals in terms of educating them, making sure your content gets through uh, and, and create engagement over time as well. So use a platform like Hub Engage, you know, that has a comprehensive tool set in one single connected platform so that you can do more with less time, uh, less budget and greater impact. Um, so you get more bang for the buck in terms of ROI on your investment in, in, in a platform like this. So let's get right into the specific tactics that can really move the needle for you once uh, you get going um, and really focus on the engagement and the workplace satisfaction part of it. I think that's really, really important. And that's what we as, as internal communicators are, are looking to solve for. And you know, I'm gonna uh, separate these sort of these ideas and these tactics out into two different buckets. Um, so let's go through the top down ones first, right? These are company to employee content and programming. That's gonna help your employees be informed, inspired and motivated to take action. Um, it, right now, the most important content trends around the pandemic, of course, right? And keeping your employees healthy and safe. So in this example, you see on screen, uh, we've got a healthcare system that communicates everything COVID related uh, in special menus and submenus. It's easy to navigate, send out push notifications, email, remind, uh, and much more. And I would imagine right now they're probably talking about how and who on the front lines of their um, you know, uh, healthcare workforce, because this is a hospital system, uh, who's going to get that Pfizer vaccine, right? Um, and how are they going to roll it out? And, and how, how, does, how does the priority for that happen? So there's literally no such thing as too much information when you've got this, you know, global health crisis in play. So definitely use this as an opportunity to get that, you know, communications platform to act as that, that, that vehicle, that mechanism that you've always wanted uh, into, into position. Now, if you really want to drive traffic to your platform, make the content super exclusive. So a lot of times I sit with our customers and I say, tell me about, you know, the different types of content that you're pushing through. What, what can you put into this um, platform that is so exclusive that you can only get it here, right? So this is a great way to get your engagement numbers up, a great way to get people to uh, download the app, uh, you know, if they haven't done so already. Um, so you can only get it at one source. Now, when people have to go somewhere to get this information, it's, it's totally a no brainer, right? And an example of this type of content might be something super specific uh, to your company around subjects like compliance, information on how to do their jobs, uh, resources, guides, uh, employee insider themed content all this type of stuff. Um, and, you know, th there is that peer-to-peer -peer effect. Uh, once other folks see it and they start talking about it, and if you make that content shareable, they can tag other employees in it so that those other employees are alerted and, you know, they see the alert in their platform like, hey, um, you know, so-and-so tagged me, I need to go uh, take a look at this as well. A very popular and powerful tactic is to allow your leaders to communicate with your employees uh, and vice versa with employees talking to their senior leaders. And there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to achieve this, uh, depending on, you know, how your leaders want to roll out, how they want to communicate with folks, you know, what their comfort level is. But at a very high level, anything your leaders uh, or you post on their behalf can have comments, you can you know, enable likes, sharing internally, externally. 
And now what that does is it allows employees to show and voice their thoughts on whatever it is that you're talking about. So we have, um, you know, executives, CEOs um, of companies of all shapes and sizes that will turn this, this feature on because they want to hear from employees uh, in real time what their thoughts are you know, maybe test out, um, you know, a new product idea or a new service idea. How does it feel to them? Maybe they want to get that feedback before it goes to the customer. Now, if your leadership is not really comfortable doing that, there are other ways to collect this insightful information. Um, of course, you can do things like forms, uh, storytelling, send out a survey uh, in the form of maybe, uh, uh, you know, ask, ask our leaders. Um, and you see that on screen here. This allows employees to voice their questions and feedbacks in a more structured environment that allows for you to then document that stuff and then maybe follow up on the query, right? So you can also allow your employees to just like and share that content as well, maybe not con comment on that content. So it always yields a positive result. Uh, you don't have to monitor it or anything like that. And your leaders feel like their efforts are being received well and echo throughout the digital universe that we all live in as well. So definitely, definitely get your leaders involved. It's also a great way to sell the platform. I've mentioned this in, in previous webinars in the past. Um, uh, we did a webinar this fall about, uh, you know, how to engage your leaders and how leaders can lead throughout a platform like this. Um, you know, it's, it's super, super important for them to play a role in this. And also for you as a stakeholder, once your leaders start using a platform like this, well, then it's really hard to, to, to let go of it. Um, and you as, as the stakeholder are, are a hero because these leaders need it. Uh, they're addicted to it. And this is how they get their information out. They've gotten used to it. They have a process. Um, you know, uh, we've got CEOs every Friday recording videos and putting videos out. That's just their tradition now. That's their, um, you know, their go-to um, every Friday. And so it becomes addictive for them and, and it's a must have for them as well. Uh, intrinsic motivation. It's something I harp on a lot, I know, but I really believe that you have to answer the question of what's in it for me, right? If I'm your employee. And there's nothing like a tangible reward to get the job done. Now, Hub Engage, uh, in our, our new uh, platform that we just rolled out this fall, we've got active integrations with Tango Rewards. So you can develop your own rewards program that ties automatically into a, a world-class catalog of rewards that gets fulfilled seamlessly, right? So, you know, A to Z, everything gets done for you. Now, this can be a points-based system. It can be a straight rewards just for achievements. Um, and you can decide, you know, I'm not maybe I'm not going to uh, integrate with with Tango or I'm not going to do a catalog or anything like that, but I've got my own rewards that I'm just going to distribute internally and come up with that mechanism. You could certainly do that as well. So you can customize this and tailor it to your specific uh, specifications for your program and what you have uh, in mind. And we're coming up with, um, I, I should just mention that we're, we're coming up with some great uh, toolkits for this as well for rewards and recognition. So we're going to have templates, we're going to have best practices. So if you don't know where to start, we're going to help you with that as well. So look for that coming uh, in Q1 inside of the platform as well. Possibly the greatest thing a leader can do today is give kudos and recognition to employees who are performing at their best. These folks can uh, be, you know, people who go the extra mile or above and beyond to perform the mission, vision, and values of the organization the best. Uh, they can be highlighting um, heroes, as you see in this example, with a thank you video or share a story about someone to make them feel special and appreciated for the job that they do every day for you and ultimately your customers. Now we've got some retail customers, some folks that are using the platform to encourage and support customer facing employees as well um, as uh, you know, fulfillment delivery employees to make sure the company can deliver on the holidays right now so that everybody uh, you know, has a great holiday season that we all desperately need so much and deserve uh, in this challenging year. So every segment uh, definitely um, has an application for uh, recognition of employee brand ambassadors. It's a great time uh, of year for your leadership to thank your employees um, for fighting the, you know, the good fight this year and the most challenging work environment known to mankind to, you know, um, you know um, that we've all had to live, live through this year. And also to offer guidance and a vision, right? Inspire for 2021 as we hopefully turn the page to a brighter future ahead on the horizon. 
Helping people do their jobs better with training and learning modules is very popular to companies that want to move folks along the employee life cycle. Short format micro learning in the forms of quizzes, trivia, learning challenges. Um, these are all great examples, right? And it should be worth mentioning that there is also a peer to peer effect when these kinds of tactics are enabled inside of an employee experience platform. Uh, because if I see my coworkers getting ahead with knowledge and skill training, I'm going to want to do that as well to get ahead too. And this time of year, it's critical to have your employees engaged um, all around that mission, vision, and values so that they take advantage you know, of these modules um, and you can create incentivized learning that helps them stay true to your corporate mission. Uh, so learning and training is, is definitely something we, we encourage pushing through the platform as, as well, just on a continuing education um, uh, benefit basis. Now, integrating content uh, or linking directly, uh, this is something that you can, of course, do. And, and if you've got your content and other legacy systems, link it right in or create a seamless transfer of formatted content with uh, APIs. And like I said earlier, use the web apps as that starting point, um, like your own intranet that connects to all these wonderful platforms that either pull or push information to Hub Engage so that the transfer and the flow of information is as frictionless as possible to the employee. This is really where you can get organized and really kind of you know, have this central backbone uh, and you know, weaponize all the other content and systems that you have. Uh, it's very, very simple and very easy to do this. Uh, we have experience across pretty much any platform out there that, that allows you know, API integrations. It can be easy as linking directly, which you can do yourself. It can be you know, more complex where we actually integrate and pull that content in and format it for you. Uh, and even that workflow, uh, you know, we can get done for you so that it's, it's really easy to do. But, uh, you know, I highly recommend, you know, um, using a platform like Hub Engage as that central source of information and pushing people to the right place uh, to get that information just in time when they need it the most. You should always push notify on any new or unread content in the platform. And I know that a lot of companies shy away from push notifying too much. There, there, there seems to be this general fear of, I don't really want to annoy my employees. Um, you know, what if they get, you know, angry that we're sending them too much information, it's overload. But I'll be honest with you, um, the more the better, uh, especially in, in, in the, the day and age we're living in today. Uh, in fact, employees generally are thankful for these gentle sort of asynchronous reminders to take action on something that they might have missed. And remember, notifications are customizable by each employee's individual devices. So if they want to reduce the amount of notifications or increase the cadence, that's totally up to them. And inside of the platform, uh, you know, when you deploy and they first access it, your employees are prompted to agree, right? And they're going to opt in to those notifications. So you, you know, you as an employer have their permission, of course, uh, and they can adjust this along the journey. They can decide and say, you know what, I, I really don't want to get so many notifications, or maybe I just want to get the important things. So you can sort of, uh, you know, fine tailor and adjust that as you go throughout time. But definitely don't, don't worry about the push notifications. Um, you'll see an engagement bump in your analytics if you start being more aggressive in push notifications. That's just, that just happens um, all the time. Email digests uh, summarize all the actions. This is something new that we rolled out this year. So let's say every Friday you send out an automated digest of your content. Uh, it's a great way for me to see what I might have missed. Now these can be configured so that you can include all the content that's pushed or maybe just what a particular employee did not engage in yet. Um, so we have um, a, a customer uh, in the uh, manufacturing environment. Now, these folks um, have a lot of folks that aren't on emails, right? Um, and they can't reach them. Um, so they, you know, pushed out the apps and they're getting them through the apps. But they also collected personal emails as well on an opt-in basis. And they're able to also send these digests out to them because on the manufacturing floor, they can't be on their phones all the time. So they might miss things. And then, you know, when they turn their phones on, of course, they, they see, you know, all the updates for the day, or maybe they get all their push notifications along 
with all the other not notifications that they might get from you know other apps that they might have installed. But the automated email definitely helped them because then at the end of the week, you know, I might be tired and I didn't look at everything there, but I'm gently reminded that, hey, you know what, I didn't engage or I didn't interact in this. Especially when you've got content that's um, time sensitive, it's critical information, um, you know, you need them, you need to get their eyeballs on it. Um, or it's something like an engagement survey, something, you know, you as a stakeholder really just kind of need folks to get done. Um, maybe there's an incentive behind it, but you know you really want folks to engage in it. So definitely do do the the automated emails. Uh, and in this this example that you see here on screen, this is a, a another healthcare organization down in Texas, and uh, you know they've got these nice tiles that that show, and I can quickly kind of get a preview, and I can just you know click on that and instantly go. It doesn't matter if I'm using my phone or if I'm using you know a computer. Um, I'm able to, to see the content um, pretty, pretty frictionless and get to it very easily. Now let's take a look at some of the bottom-up tactics to let your employee contribute to the content ecosystem. And I get really excited about these because I believe that these, these are the most powerful. It, it's one thing for a company to, to you know, do it top down and push the content out and you know, yay for you as a, as a stakeholder because you know, you're, you're communicating what you need to do. But when you can grab stuff from your uh, employees and you know, sort of make them feel like they have skin in the game as well, it becomes that much more powerful. Uh, and you start to see engagement really, really rise. This all goes back to that theory of you know, motivation and, and why should I use a platform like this uh, to begin with. So um, the biggest, probably most popular um, uh, tactic you can enable is a social feed, right? These are fun and engaging ways to let your employees post short format updates on what they're up to. Uh, maybe it's a work event or an innovation that they're uh, working on. Maybe it's a simple happy birthday tribute. Maybe it's tagging an employee uh, and a celebration of an achievement or memo memorializing an event that just happened or is coming up. Uh, the possibilities here are endless. Uh, when you're doing live events, these are a great way to kind of, you know, hashtag and then, you know, allow the external sharing as well to, to other networks. But, you know, social feeds help companies build culture. Many organizations just don't know how social and how creative their employees can be because they've not really had the chance to express themselves in a fast and easy format in the past. And of course, you know, you can monitor all this, right? You can have the flagging mechanisms in place to remove the inappropriate content. You can also have exclusion filters around prohibited terms, you know, profanity, all that kind of stuff. We have a lot of AI built into uh, the platform as well. Th th this helps you manage it. And, um, you know, I'd say the companies that have deployed social feeds, uh, you know, inside of HubEngage, they really don't have a problem with inappropriate stuff. Maybe it happens, you know, on an isolated case by case basis. But uh, you know, employees know that they're they're outed, right? If they say something wrong or they say something inappropriate, so everybody you know sort of has that filter when they go in naturally, and um, it's just it's it's a really great way to be surprised by your employees. Um, I and I and I've seen executives cringe at you know the idea of allowing something like uh, a social feed to happen happen because you just don't know, is it going to be revolting? Are people going to post the wrong things? Is it going to backfire on us? And then they're pleasantly surprised when they didn't realize that their employees had so much to say, so much to share, so much positivity. Um, and that helps other employees become more productive as well. So I definitely recommend, uh, you know, sticking to the social feeds and, and enabling them. And again, everything inside of your platform can be targeted and segmented. So you might decide to enable these features for a specific segment of employees and not another um, and you might decide to roll it out slowly too and say, you know what, I'm going to start with a sample group of 100 employees. Uh, let's see how it goes. Let's, let's test that out. Let's do a couple of pulse surveys, see if they like it. Uh, and then, you know, using the platform as my lab, um, um, I'll, I'll start uh, testing it out with uh, other folks and we'll slowly roll this thing out and see, see how it fits, right? And, and does it work inside of our culture? And of course, get the buy-in from your leadership um, and make sure they're aligned and happy as well. This is a very popular tactic for companies, right? Storytelling. Um, now, if you want to extract the best content right out of your folks, there's no better way to do it than this. And if you talk to many of the stakeholders that use HubEngage, you'll see many of them having 
uh, this charge inside of their job description of collecting stories, right? Um, and a lot of internal communicators say that that's what I do. I, I collect stories um, because that's the most powerful thing I can do uh, and share amongst the organization. These might be stories from customers. They might be from your employees. But the ultimate goal is to find these nuggets of gold and then cross share them throughout departments or entire uh, enterprises so that everyone can then benefit from the learnings and best practices. Now, the use cases here are, are countless again. You can run campaigns based on, let's say, health and safety. Um, think safety alerts. If you're a manufacturing company and, and, you know, and an incident happens uh, and you want to, you know, share, you know, here, here's what happens, here's the situation, here's how we remedied it, and here's how we're going to prevent it from happening in the future. Let that go laterally um, across your organization. Uh, great customer service stories. This is also great, um, you know, when you've got sales teams or marketing teams um, and, and they want to kind of understand how your customers are, might be absorbing your product or service that you're putting out there. Uh, exceptional employee recognition, career milestones, uh, you know, recognition, all this kind of stuff can, can fit inside of this, this tactic. These can be configured as limited engagements where you run the campaign for a set amount of time, uh, collect the stories and moderate that into new content that can then be pushed out again inside of the platform for more engagement down the road. Um, or you can, you know, have them being published in real time, right? Um, so then going back to, you know, that whole motivating factor, um, that theory, you know, you're giving your folks skin in the game when you allow them to contribute to the content ecosystem. So this is just a fantastic, fabulous way to crowdsource the best content, distill that right up to the surface, run a couple of campaigns. Um, you know, even if you do it once a quarter, it's very, very powerful. Um, and, and folks love to do it. So they love the social feeds, but they love to also do, you know, more in-depth storytelling, maybe submitting a video, maybe talking uh, about um, something that happened with pictures, things like that. Um, really, really great way to get engagement quick. Running periodic multi-format surveys through your employee experience platform is uh, a great way to get feedback from your employees and also make sure that their voice is counted. Now, these can be short format pulse surveys. Uh, maybe you just ask three quick questions and you trigger that at the right time in the right place, right? When folks are maybe coming into work in the morning, you know, you're grabbing them, you know, in those 15 minutes that they're getting settled into their jobs. Um, or maybe you can do a, a longer format section survey, such as a quarterly employee engagement survey um, or an employee evaluation form, things like that. All of this stuff can be run through Hub Engage. So we've got, you know, really dynamic forms, um, you know, sectioned off surveys um, and then incentivizing these things, right? Surveys with, you know, um, putting a reward behind it or recognition or even just, you know, if you don't have a budget, just enable the leaderboard, just points that, that rank in that segmented leaderboard, make them really more enticing, more powerful. That gives you the data that you then need to make better informed future decisions, right? So, you know, the goal is obviously to get you the information that you need as fast and as frictionless as possible, but you've got to make it taste good, right? For the employee, it's got to be, uh, you know, incentivizing. I've got to be motivated to do it. Um, and it can be a challenge to get folks to take surveys. So we've tried to sort of approach it from, okay, what are the best ways to get folks to actually engage um, inside of um, these types of tactics? And we've designed and architected surveys forms um, to meet those goals so that you, you do get folks to, to participate very, very quickly. And um, just to give you an example, uh, you know, we have a hospitality company, um, a, a franchisee hospitality company, um, that, you know, um, I think they have, you know, 14 or 15 different banner brands of, you know, uh, hotels and um, um, express uh, uh, hotels uh, across North America. And they've moved all their surveys completely inside of the platform, right? So their general managers at property locations can engage very quickly. Their employees can engage really quickly uh, and they can make their, their GMs uh, inside of each of those properties um, um, be able to also create those surveys that they want and just put it out to their employees and their folks. So they're empowered to do that as well. It's super powerful um, to, to enable, you know, your, your sub stakeholders, if you will, that 
our uh, admins inside of your platform to really run their own tactics and then segment that to their specific employee populations. One of the major trends in the HR space uh, in the past you know, few years has been recognition, right? There's no doubt about it. This can be top down um, or peer to peer based on uh, how you want to structure it. So we've completely refunk uh, recognition inside of Hub Engage this year um, and made it uh, you know, uh, a very, very powerful system where you don't need to go out and get another uh, recognition system anymore. You can give away uh, points that can be redeemed for merchandise tied to catalog. Um, you can do gifting as well. Uh, employees can recognize other employees. Uh, you can set the amount of you know points or whatever it is that you you know you want to incentivize them with. Now, with an employee experience platform like Hub Engage, uh, you can easily enable these types of programs um, with the rewards fulfillment and manage the whole program in one place with all the connected analytics and controls together along with all of your other tactics. So really there's no need to go out there and shop for a separate platform just for this initiative. You have it, right? You've got that, you've got that car in the garage, go ahead and drive it um, anytime you're ready to do it. And this is of course something that you might wanna do seasonally too. You know, you might wanna do it at the end of the year or you might wanna have an ongoing program um, that you do throughout the year. Um, if you've got seasonality to your business, you know, all these different things off, uh, often factor in. But you know, recognition and recognizing employees, particularly this year. I mean, I mean, we all need it. We all need a pat on the back. We all need that support and that um, you know that that recognition, um, not just from the top, but you know, peer to peer um, and bottom up recognition as well, uh, letting us know that you know we're we're all trying as hard as we can and we're doing as good a job as we can, and you know that gives hope for the future as well. So definitely, um, um, use things like recognition. Okay, um, I think we're just about uh, wrapping it up for today. Looks like we're pretty good on time. I'm going to um, grab a couple of questions that were uh, pre-submitted from some folks on the call today and kind of just uh, tackle some of those. So um, we had a question, uh, can we tie features together in a program and schedule it? Yeah, absolutely. You can certainly do that and you can run campaigns. Uh, in fact, I'm going to quickly pull up here on screen um, a graphic that kind of illustrates that and, and how you can do that inside of a strategy. So here's a simple example of, you know, full cycle engagement with lots of different tactics and, you know, things pulled into one program. So you can take your things like your news content, your surveys, your messaging, uh, and then you can basically... Uh, tie all of these things together in an automated se automated sequence based based on their user behavior. So let's take a basic piece of content, for example, maybe you've got a news article, um, an announcement, a policy or a procedure. Um, so just to take you through the user experience of what that would feel like, you could notify your employees, right, through that push notification based on the segment that they belong to that that piece of content is now available. So boom, it shows up, um, let's say on my phone, um, and I tap on that. Now, once I've read that content, uh, you can automatically trigger a quiz to test um, my knowledge in a fun way um, to make sure that I understood what you, it is that you conveyed to me, or maybe even just a quick survey to gauge, you know, hey, was that content useful to you? You can then tie in the rewards and the recognition and the incentive part of it as well, right? So maybe it's a coupon for a cup of coffee or, or just some simple points that rank in, in a leaderboard. But you know what you're trying to do is just, you know almost create this feedback loop, right? And in this loop, you inform, you reinforce the information, you in incentivize your folks, you get that feedback, which you can then use to drive more content in the future, right? So this is really supercharging engagement where all of your features are beautifully tied together to uh, accomplish all of your goals. So definitely you can run these these campaigns and you know as a stakeholder tick the box on so many different things that you're responsible for right it's like i got to make sure that jane smith read this compliance document she understood it i know she read it because i can see uh, in my analytics that she opened it i know the dwell time how long she looked at it i knew she understood it because she took a quiz she got all the questions right 
Um, and then I recognized her. I gave her an achievement certificate or a badge or a coupon for a cup of coffee or something like that. Um, so, you know, I, I ticked the box on so many things, you know, um, just, you know, in terms of all the four or five stages of employee engagement that I need to take folks through. Um, so it's, it's, it's super powerful to, 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 to run those campaigns and do that. Can we integrate our existing learning management systems into yours and can the data be exported? Yes. So any third party system, uh, as long as they have an API that allows it, uh, we can integrate with, right? So we have companies that, you know, use, you know, LMSs like Cornerstone or something like that. Uh, and, and they want us to, um, you know, um, put those learning modules directly in or at least link directly to those you know, third party systems, they can log in there and they can then take that stuff. But what we're doing is, is really pushing the engagement on those LMS systems, right? Because we're, we're the central backbone for everything communications. So, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, pushing the traffic and directing it there. Um, so yeah, we can definitely do those integrations into your third party systems. Um, and remember Hub Engage as a platform, you know, as a SaaS based platform, we can push or pull data into any third party system. So um, we're very flexibly designed in that sense. Um, and we've done tons and tons of these integrations um, with lots of different customers. Every single customer that comes to us is, is um, you know, has, has something new. Um, so we've done, you know, a lot of different things. We, we see a lot of common things like Workday and, you know, um, you know the, the popular things, getting SharePoint and all that stuff integrated. But, you know, we've also done the one-offs and, you know, we have procedures and processes that we know work for that. And we've also established relationships into those third-party vendors as well. So, you know, when we're doing things like single sign-on, stuff like that, let's say you've got a payroll provider, ADP, you know, we've got reps over there that we work with and we get all of that done seamlessly for you. Um, so we take that workload off of you and, and take care of all of that uh, stuff for you as well. What are some of the new features for next year you're working on in your product roadmap? Great question. Um, so we've been cooking up a lot of things this year, um, not just um, you know, revamping our platform and sort of uh, you know, doing a, a whole new re-envisioned um, version of it, which is, which is what's consumed a lot of our time this year. But at the same time, you know, in our labs, we're constantly thinking about what else can we introduce and how can we make it better and how can we um, move the needle on engagement for our customers because that's really important. Uh, we really want our customers to, to see engagement rising over time. So a couple of things just to, to kind of give you a teaser of, of stuff that, that that's in our lab right now and, and being developed. Um, enhanced surveys with, uh, with intelligence built in. Um, so kind of think of it like a, if this, then that question logic, right? So surveys are smarter, um, um, you know, depending on how somebody answers a question, they'll get another specific question based on previous history there. Uh, templates built in for easy admin customizing based on best practices. So, um, you know, a lot of our stakeholders, uh, they have ideas in terms of where to start, but gee, wouldn't it be great if you just had a library and a drop down and you could start uh, on something that you know in your industry has worked um, for, for your peers working in other companies. Um, and then you can customize it, right? Tailor it and you know, spice it just right so that it's, it's, it's perfect for your organization. So a lot of templating is, is coming down the pike um, based on best practices. Uh, even more recognition features. So we're gonna be doing templating there as well. So packaging that all up and cataloging it. Uh, for themed events, uh, you know, the, the most popular things, birthdays, events, milestones, anniversaries, um, and creating, you know, these sort of program kits for you, right? So you've got the best practices built in there, the big rewards catalog built into it, um, all that kind of stuff. So it really becomes soup to nuts. You don't, you don't have to go anywhere else. You can do it all inside of, of this one platform. Uh, a big theme around what we're working on, and we've we've been working on that this year, but we're going to continue to keep doing it. Is the uh, you know the artificial intelligence and machine learning part of it, right? And that is slowly infiltrating throughout our platform. And what that does is it makes the platform um, so smart that the experience is automated and frictionless, right? So on the admin side, it's a lot less time to manage, um, and you as a stakeholder can learn more about your employees and build profiles that help you recruit better employee brand ambassadors in the future. Uh, if you think of an end game of using a platform like this, so obviously, you know, the, 
you know, the most superficial thing right up front is, is like, yeah, 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 you know, I put the platform out there and I'm able to communicate with people instantly right now. So I did that. That's great. But what's next, right? What else can I get out of it? Um, and, 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 and how can I use the data better in the future, right? So we really want to help you build that employee profile, right? Who is the ideal person to work at your company based on how your people behave today, right? So if we're able to recognize patterns there, if we're able to, you know, sort of put those into algorithms and, and give you something back in terms of this is, this is what helps you sell better. This is what helps you create better innovative products. I think that's, that's really where our data scientists are looking to take our product uh, in the future. We want to help you enhance your workforce by harnessing all that data. So then you could then put that into talent development, recruiting, uh, and you can hire better. Um, another thing we're, we're working on right now is this more precise language support for localization globally. We have a lot of global clients. So, you know, Hub Engage already supports 12 different languages and, you know, um, that's, that's a very easy thing to, to create, um, but automatic, uh, natural language processing, all that sort of stuff. These are things that are now being fine tuned and perfected in the past you know, automatic translation features, things like that, they were choppy. I mean, if you've ever used Google Translate or Facebook Translate, it's sometimes you can say the wrong thing. And, and for us as a company, there's a liability there, right? We, we wanna make sure that you are saying exactly what you mean to say there. But that technology has moved um, quite a bit, I'd say just in the past three to six months. And we've, we've kept an eye on that. So we're, we're definitely, you know, adopting some of those, um, those those great um, um, technology advancements and putting it into things like uh, language uh, processing and, and, and things like that as well. Do you offer discounts for contracts that go long term? Are there setup fees? Um, yes, absolutely. So typically, you know, customers that sign up for Hub Engage, um, you know, they want to do this. This isn't a one off for them. It's not something that they just, you know, they're going to do it for a short amount of time and they're going to turn it off. Uh, they're going to keep it going for a long time. Um, we've got customers that are, you know, uh, you know, renewing three year, five year, seven year contracts constantly with us. Uh, and absolutely, we discount those contracts that go long term. So the longer you contract with us, of course, um, you know, our, our sales team can can discount those uh, even more to give you more value over time. Um, and the best part about that is, is when you lock it in today, you're protected against any price increases down the road, right? So next year, you know, we could introduce a whole lot more features and, you know, um, that could have a cost impact. But if you've already locked it in and, and you know, and you're already contracted with us for those features, well, hey, you just get, you get to reap the benefit of that, which is, which is great for you. So a lot of companies come in here and just think long-term and they think, yeah, this is, this is how we're going to communicate. It's pretty clear and obvious to us. Um, so if we're going to be doing this for a long time, let's, let's go ahead and negotiate something where, you know, we get the best bang for the buck in terms of our long-term contract. Um, in terms of setup fees, uh, there can be one-time setup fees. Uh, and again, this varies, uh, on your particular situation. Uh, if you're interested or you want us to scope that out, I'd definitely recommend reaching out to our, our sales teams, just go onto our website and, you know, fill out that quick form. Somebody will, will get in touch with you there. Um, and we can sort of learn and understand your organization a little bit better. You know, what legacy systems do you have in place? Do you want a single sign on? What are your security requirements? You know, hosting, all this kind of stuff. We can certainly work with you there, um, you know, and, 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 and put those estimates together. But um, it's usually a one-time setup fee. You don't pay that, you know, year after year. You set it up once, um, unless a system changes and you come to us next year and say, hey, we changed our, you know, our payroll provider. And so, you know, all our single sign-on, um, you know, data is changing completely over. Okay, well then now we got to kind of re redo everything. So there could be another one-off, um, you know, consultative fee based on that. But again, these things are, um, you know, pretty straight, straightforward. And again, we can help companies based on their needs requirements. So a lot of times we'll come into companies and they'll have an IT department. They'll say, okay, we'll do this, 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 and this. We can do the heavy lifting. You guys just connect the dots for us. 
Um, some companies will come in and their IT counterparts will say, we don't have any time for anything like this. We really need, we're looking for the vendor to do everything. Fine. We've got folks to do that. Um, you know, you give us access and we can certainly connect the dots and, and then we can show you, uh, you know, how to manage and maintain it, or we could do that for you as well. So very flexible, a lot of experience, um, you know, being a platform that's been around for so many years now, um, you know, a lot of tried and true best practices and experience uh, in that domain uh, as well. Okay, I think we're just about wrapping it up for, to, for the day. Um, I wanna thank all of you for joining today's webinar. I certainly hope that it was useful for you. Um, and if you do have further questions or you, you, know, you just simply wanna chat about how we can help you move the needle on employee uh, engagement inside of your platform or you're thinking about deploying a platform like this, definitely drop me a line um, at my email on screen. Um, you can also visit our website for more information and follow our blog where every week we're adding new articles, uh, thought leadership on a variety of topics relating to the employee experience. We're adding lots of videos, things like that as well. So you've got, you've got a lot of good resources there. So definitely take a look at that. So with that, thanks everybody. Uh, we'll definitely talk again soon. But for today, uh, we'll, uh, we'll say goodbye. Thanks so much. Take care.